I shared something on my community wall and it was about the Bud Light boycott. And part of what I said was, I said, yes, it does need to happen more, even if we fall back into our old habits. And I said that part because of what was being said in that video. And what was being said in that video was what I've heard a bunch of people saying. A bunch of people who loves to tell us about the destruction of society. But we're in their videos and live streams essentially downplaying the boycott and categorizing it as futile. And that's one of the issues I have with uh, certain types among the conspiracy theorist crowd. They love helplessness. So seeing rebellion, it repels them. In like a doctor needs for people to be sick kind of way. The fourth industrial revolution is a combination of technological breakthroughs which will completely change business models, uh, society, economies. Fourth industrial revolution is coming with enormous speed and will change not only what we are doing but who we are. The world will grow more together in the digital age. We are becoming more interdependent. We will have not less, we will have more globalization. But the question is, how do we master and how do we construct this new type of globalization? That was Klaus Schwab. As bold as a lion he was in saying that. Looked the camera straight in the face and said, yeah, the conspiracy theorists were right all along. We do want a new world order. He said it, you heard him. And you know what? We've provided people like Claus with plenty of reason to be as bold as he is. Like one of Claus's top advisors, Yuval Noah, and this dude is nuts. I think once you're superfluous, you don't have power. Uh, again, we are used to the age of the masses of the 19th and 20th century, but we, all, we, we saw all these successful uh, massive uprisings, revolutions, revolts. So we, we got we are used to thinking about the masses as powerful. But this is basically a 19th century, a 20th century phenomenon. I don't think that the masses, even if they, they somehow organize themselves, uh, stand much of a chance. We are not in, in, in Russia of 1917 or in, uh, or in 19th century Europe. As bold as that, Yuval is. But there is a silver lining in that dark cloud. Because Yuval and his ilk, they do have concern about rebellion. And it's bad when our opponent has more belief in our strength than we do. To the people, to the other people who believe that we have no power here. I've talked about them before. The citizenry who loves to see us as powerless. I've had enough of this protein block bullshit! Yeah, this is bullshit! We're fucking hungry now! But why I'm... What I mean when I say, um, when the fat lady sings, mind it. You know the saying that ain't over till the fat lady sings. It's a sad indictment and it just came off childish. There's a controversy that's been brewing all week. It began with this Instagram video, Bud Light partnered with a trans influencer named Dylan Mulvaney to promote its March Madness contest. Now, quick warning, this video does include some gunfire. In protest, Kid Rock showed this video of him shooting cases of Bud Light with an assault style rifle. Country singer Travis Tritt also tweeted that he'll be deleting all Anheuser-Busch products from his tour. A week after the Nashville shooting, 
Is it a good look, Jeff, to be firing an AR-15 anywhere, especially as something as trivial as uh, Bud Light? And then on a deeper level, the idea that a company can't do business with somebody because you don't agree with their lifestyle. There's been a very dangerous precedent being set here by saying if we don't like something, we shoot at it. If we don't like something, we boycott it rather than trying to understand anything about it. It's really it's a sad indictment. It just came off childish. Today, Bud Light facing some backlash over its partnership with a trans influencer. Take a look. There's a video posted by Kid Rock that has more than a million views, hundreds of comments praising him for shooting at cases of Bud Light. Other videos posted online show people like dumping their Bud Light into trash bins and down sinks, even destroying cans of the beer. Why? Well, Bud Light had teamed up with trans influencer Dylan Mulvaney during the NCAA's March Madness college basketball tournament. And while March Madness has officially wrapped up by now, it seems like the response to this partnership just seems to be getting more and more intense. Jay Valle, who's been following this story, is here with us now. Explain this. Explain the timeline here. Well, after Dylan posted that, Hallie, thank you for having me, first of all. But, you know, after Dylan posted this video, I mean, a lot of backlash came, mostly from conservatives. And then when you have those individuals and, and, and with larger platforms like Kid Rock, you can imagine the conversation ignited even more. But Dylan Mulvaney is no stranger to the backlash from conservatives who, you know, as she has 10 million followers on TikTok, and she's a trans woman who has documented her experience for over a year now. Dylan is not a she, that's a dude. Talking about some of her experiments. That, it's not a her. But anyway, Bud Light, the Anheuser-Busch company, has lost about $4 billion for a demonstration of power from the people who are looked upon as powerless. And another good thing about it is that the beer company displayed what I know about them and people like them. What's that? Well, they've turned on each other. A lot of companies do that. They'll start firing people, canceling contracts and everything. The lady, Alyssa Heinerscheid, vice president of marketing, she's the one who supposedly made the deal with Dylan. And the people over her is saying, they didn't know nothing about it. We don't know her. She did it behind our backs. The dog ate my homework, etc., etc. Throwing her under the bus, right? The bad thing about it all, is that they exploit our differences every day, but rarely do we exploit theirs. The Bud Light, and the Bud Light situation is only one of the ways, not the uh, end to it all. But the situation that we're in, it does look bad. I gotta admit, it does look bad. It looks like there will be no coming back from the spot that we're in. We got you surrounded. Damn, we're in a tight spot. Just come on out and grab it in. Don't try nothing fancy. Your situation is putting out hopeless. Damn, we're in a tight spot. I see what other people see. I just don't come to the conclusion that we're powerless. Even in the cage, the cougar is dangerous. And the one taunting the big cat knows it. Oh, these things are scary. He knows that if that cat gets a hold of him, he's finished. So it's one thing to be in the bad spot, which we are, but it's another thing for that bad spot to be our final resting place. You heard Claus Schwab say that they're not finished putting their pieces together yet, so I can't see that we're finished yet. 